Hello everyone, Michael Neff here, Director of Gears Sports. And this video is going to be on how to make a Gears Club or how to get the, this club into 3D. And uh, you should have already seen the video that talks about how we put the markers on the head. So for this, we'll just we'll, we'll assume that you've watched that and uh, that you've put the markers on the head properly, whether it's iron wedge, putter, driver. But now we need to basically calibrate this golf club. We use 14 markers to calibrate the golf club or to create the golf club, but only six markers are used during the tracking of the swing. So the first thing is, is that you need to have one of these little handy dandy shaft clips. Um, on the other side of the shaft clip is, is this stuff called mole skin, and that's basically what keeps it uh, from sliding. And it's kind of curved in a way that it snaps on. Now these things can break if you're not too careful with them and they're not cheap, they're 25 bucks each. So carefully put them on and take them off. You can reuse them forever. Um, but there's a large and a small. And the large ones are obviously for more uh, thicker walled shafts here um, in this portion. We, don't, we want the shaft clip to be pretty much as close to the grip as possible. We don't want it to go on the grip itself, but on the shaft as close to the grip as possible. So if you're using a dynamic gold or a putter shaft or a wedge shaft, usually you need the small shaft clip. We send you both large and small. Uh, but this is a driver. Almost all drivers end up being in the large. And you basically just snap that down. And sometimes I'll just wrap a little piece of black electrical tape around that just, just to keep it, just in case. It doesn't add much weight. And um, to keep it from having to need to be recalibrated, um, it's a good idea. Um, you know, we can calibrate this club and your customer could ac accidentally kind of grab it and pull hard and, and then you'd have to rescale the club. So, you know, really a little piece of tape around, around the neck there is, is a really good idea. These little uh, reflective markers that come with the system, they, they basically snap on here, and you want to push on until you hear the, that snap, okay? Like so. So this is basically, there's three markers here, three markers on the club head, and that's basically what you're going to be using to swing the club. But we need to create the club, and in order to do that, we need more markers to be able to tell like how, where the middle of the shaft is, how long the club is, etc. In your kit, in your gears kit that you get, you get these little guys. And one is shorter than the other one. You can kind of see that. One is shorter than the other one, okay? The short one, you can see it has little bumpers. These are magnetic and they're very precise. Um, they're, they're magnetic, so they basically just kind of, you slide the little posts in the hole there and the magnetic kind of shows up. And what you want to do, so there's different we have these little rubber um, bumpers in here because not all shafts taper the same. So if you can see this here, we're gonna put this shaft clip on so that when it's flush, it's nice and even like this. So if I were to put the shaft clip down here by the head, you'd see it would wobble around a lot like that. So, and if it went too high, like up in here, it wouldn't close all the way. So we wanna make sure that we get that, you know, it's usually, you know, maybe a foot or 10 inches or so above the hosel on irons, maybe it's six inches somewhere, but we want that to be snug and we don't want it tilting this way or that way. And you'll see why when we do the troubleshooting video, this will save you so much pain and suffering. Um, the reason why we're so cautious with this is because in order to find the center of the shaft, we need to use these calibration tools. We know where the center of the markers are. Remember our little videos on we know where the center of this marker is to within 0.2 millimeters. So if I know where the middle of that marker is and I know where the middle of that marker is, then I know where the middle of the shaft is. But if this thing is pulled apart or if it's twisted or turned kind of cockeyed like that, then it might have a harder time getting a good, a good capture. So you can orient it anyway. It can be up, down, sideways, but it needs to be flush and we don't want it tilting one way or the other. You want to make sure those balls are snapped on there just, just right. This one's also the same, but these are longer stems, and these go closer to the grip section here. So you can see how that fits on snugly there. It's not twisting. I'm pushing a lot of pressure on there, but you, don't, you want that nice and neutral there. We don't want any twisting or tilting of that. Now, these don't have to be perfectly. They can be turned 
this way in different orientations. However, we don't want them, we want them snug and uh, fit on there. Now, these little posts will screw out, okay? It's important that you have these screwed all the way in like that, okay? Now, the fun part. Remember that little installation? We, we send you with one of these shaft clips and you just put it on one of your old tripods and you clamp the, clamp the shaft down. You don't want to clamp too tight because you don't want to crack the shaft. You can get, this is, uh, Cam McCormick said, hey man, as soon as you brought out the rubber bands, that was the only thing, uh, this thing was like super high tech until you ran out the rubber bands. So, but um, it's actually the best way to, um, to make sure that this thing, uh, st that the head jig. So this is how we know where the center, the crosshairs or the center of the face is. So we, and, and the driver in the software, which you'll see in the next video, you put in what the bulge and roll is and you basically find the geometric center of the face. Most drivers have a, a, a spot where that is and you basically just put the crosshairs on there making sure that the it's not tilted you can kind of see that we want to make sure it's not tilted one way or tilted the other way or lofted this way or lofted this way you can see there's these little bumpers right here and we want those bumpers to be flush to the face so we have an offset we exact we know where these are we know what the bulge and roll is that's why we are able to tell you what the touch mark where what the data data is at touch and where the data is at the center this is how we answer those tricky D-plane caution questions and how we're able to explain gear effects so well. So I'm taking two rubber bands and because this is a driver, I'm basically making a larger rubber band out of them, like so. And there's these little cleats here that you kind of go around, go around the head. onto the other side and now you have a secure kind of way to do this see if I can show that a little bit better so it's really important that that's not tilting one way or this way or it's not turning that way you want to basically make sure that that crosshair is right on your projected your geometric center of the club and is even with the score lines as you can see there now this is a right-handed club You'll notice here on this jig that one arm is longer than the other two. So the long arm always goes north or toward the grip. The other two, one's going to go out and one's going to go down. A right-handed golfer, we don't have anything coming out here. But because the face is inverted on the other, or it's, it's flopped on for a left-handed player, we basically need to unscrew this one, turn it this way, and screw it back in this hole. So now for a left-handed driver, we have, again, the long one pointing towards north. This would actually be the toe of, the, of a left-handed driver this way, so we want that going that way and that that way. So basically, there's no markers that go on the, uh, these no stems that go towards the heel. The long marker goes up, and the um, the other two, one goes to the toe and the other one goes down. Okay, now that's 13 markers, so we still need one more. We need to know how long the club is. Let me get that on there nice and snug. Again, you want that nice and snug. You don't want that tilting or anything. Now, we put one at the butt end of the grip too. So you'll just take one of the markers that comes this is the same marker that goes on the head jig. You can put this on a, you know, like the end cap, on the end cap of, um, of a custom fitting club, or you can just use double-sided tape or the sticky, and you want to put that right in the center of the grip. Okay? Now, that right there, that club right now is ready to be calibrated. All right? So you've got one on the grip, you got the shaft clip. Remember you to do a little tape around it. It's not going to move in this form, but I do that just to keep my customers from moving it because they have no idea. So, and then this, this one is the long one and you want it nice and snug. This is the short one. You want that nice and snug. And then 
For a right-handed club, the long stem goes up. The short ends go out to the toe and down. On a left-handed club, you unscrew this, screw it into this side, and then a left-handed club would be the opposite, so you twist it that way. So that is how you marker up a club. Now, that seems like a lot of work, right? The challenge is, is that in order to accurately measure what this shaft is doing, and to, or to be able to get the actual bulge and roll of the golf club and to find out where a geometric center is and how long the club is, this is the most accurate way to create a golf club in 3D, period. It is the best way to figure out what this golf club is really doing. And uh, it normally takes me about a minute to do this entire process. At first it'll take you a few, but as you get kind of more comfortable with it, you can it's, it's actually probably a little less than a minute it takes me to, um, to actually put this all together. But, um, you know, be patient with it at the beginning and it'll come fast. Um, you do, you do want to kind of, I think it's a good idea to marker up your player's clubs. So this is one of the cool features of Gears is that we actually allow you to make the club in 3D. Um, with that comes some responsibility though. You have to know how to make, basically put the markers in the right spot. You have to put these things together. You have to actually make the club in 3D. So it's really valuable for teaching and fitting. It's really accurate and um, it's kind of the price that we have to pay to get uh, really, really accurate data. Okay, so now once I've got this, now I'm going to go to the software and I'm going to show you how to put this club or recreate this club from this spot get it in 2D and how to take all these markers off. Okay, so we've just finished marking up the golf club, putting the shaft jig, uh, shaft jigs on and putting the head jig on and putting the marker on the end of the club. And you can see the corresponding markers here on gears. The, the gears is open, it's on right now, the cameras are on. And as you can see, these are the markers, these are the 14 markers that uh, that the system sees, but we need to create the avatar now. We need to create the golf club in 3D. So I always have the 3D markers on in settings under environment. There's a little tab here that you can turn them off or on. It is very important that these are on when you calibrate. It's not required, but it's super important so that you can see where they're at, making sure that you've got. So there's the grip marker, those are the two shaft markers, there's that head, and you can see where there's the, the shaft clip and then here's the markers on the head. So there's 14 markers that we need to create this club. Right up here in this uh, gears icon, there's a little tab that's called Manage Clubs. So this is where we go to create a golf club, all right? So I wanna create a new club. This is a driver. Doesn't matter what the manufacturer is, this happens to be a TaylorMade M1. I click that. I'm going to type in what this club is. It's a TaylorMade, I'll just put TM M1, excuse me, M1. And it's important to put a description of what this club is because this is how you're going to know which club you're going to select. Um, so you want to make sure you put the shaft on here. This is a matrix. matrix. And you want to put, if it's flex, matrix, X, and maybe the weight, this is 65 grams. You, know, you can put the lie angle or the loft or whatever it is you want on here. Um, just so that you, this is super important because this is what's going to show up here and this is how you're going to know which club you've selected, okay? There is the ability to, you know, make the club a certain manufacturer type, a TaylorMade R11 or R9 or a Titleist or Nike Pink, Cobra, um, or you can just keep it as gears. This is important. This is where you put the actual bulge and roll of this club, it happens to be 13 and 12. The lie angle, uh, this is really more for reference. Um, this particular club has a 60 degree lie angle. When we, ca when we scale the club, the system will actually tell us what the lie angle is. So unlike bulge and roll, the system does not tell us what the bulge and roll is. We have to put that in. And most drivers are 12 and 12 or 13 and 12, somewhere in there. 
Um, and then this loft thing also, this is more for reference, um, but the system will actually tell us what the true loft of the club is. So that's why it's so important to put that f the head jig on there flush so that we can give you the, a very accurate uh, face, what the actual loft of the club is. And for shaft, we're just gonna put matrix. Again, this is just for more, you know, for naming convention, if you wanna do some research. Um, torque, shaft length, shaft weight. Again, this is more research type of stuff. There is a feature down here um, called use grip and marker for tracking, okay? So some people like to have that grip marker on during the captures. Um, uh, and so if you want to have that on, uh, we don't, we see a negligible difference with it on and off. Um, it does improve the tracking of the end of the club, but uh, not enough. And honestly, most people cover it up with their wrist, uh, with their grip anyways. So, but we give you that option if, if you want to do that. Um, so you just, you would simply either use that or on, but if you have this clicked, you're gonna need to make sure that that stays on during captures, okay? So I'll, I'll keep that off. Um, you wanna make sure that over here that you've selected the, this is a driver. Male and female only matters because there's two different categories of where we save the clubs. So it doesn't, this doesn't really matter. This matters a ton though, because if I, if I scale it as a right-handed club, it goes into the right-handed matrix of clubs that we have and left-handed as well. So it's super important that you get the right-handed or left-handed because then the system knows if we're, we're going righty or lefty. Uh, after you uh, put the club name in you, and whatever gears model 3D avatar you want it to be, and you put the bulge and roll in, and you uh, this lying on loft, uh, flex, length, torque, shaft weight, swing weight, head weight, these are all simply for um, uh, you know, research if you're wanting to do that. The system will actually tell us what the bulge and roll, or excuse me, what the loft is, what the lie angle is. And um, again, you can use this grip end marker for tracking. Um, make sure that when you have this selected, I, I would probably name it uh, up here, grip end tracking marker, something like that, if you're gonna use that. Um, but I'm not going to use that in this case. And then I simply hit add club and there it is. Beautiful, it's not moving, it shouldn't be moving, it shouldn't be jittering at all. It should be doing exactly what it's doing in real time. You can see that this club now is selected here. It's under the driver's category. If I click this little inspector panel button here, this will actually tell me what the loft of the driver is. This is, it says 10.5 on the bottom, but it's actually 9.3. The lie angle is 59.4, bulge and roll, 13. And then all this stuff is really more for your research, okay? And we don't recommend that you go in and recalibrate uh, the club this way. You should just start from scratch. Um, so if I, if I lose this club for some reason, if, it, if the shaft marker goes off or if a head marker falls off or breaks off or something like that, I wanna go in and delete that club. And you simply just go up here to edit, you click the club, like that, that's the old one. You hit delete and then you're done. So now I just have this driver in here. You can see it's not working. I usually go over here and tap it a little bit just to make sure that it's doing exactly what I want it to do. I don't wanna see any kind of uh, jittering of the club head itself. I just wanna make sure that that's doing exactly what I'm doing to it in real time. So if you have any questions on that, call one gears now You can, um, be sure that we'll be able to help you through any issues that you might have. Uh, we have a troubleshooting video as well in case you're having a, a little trouble uh, calibrating the club um, so that we can, you can kind of walk through some of those reasons of why it wouldn't calibrate very well. But um, if you follow these steps, you should be in really good shape. Thank you very much.